we've bought this 1972 no we haven't bought it this car i've had for a while this car has been in storage this car has been in the barn it is a genuine barn find if i think i've forgotten about it for 13 years and i found it again so the first things first on these cars it's been off the road for that length of time uh we want to see if it get it running running driving change some parts on it get it mot'd use it enjoy it that's what they're there for. Okay, I pulled the car in last week. Um, now I've got to get it back off the trailer and to get it back in the garage. And it runs. No, it doesn't. You haven't seen that yet. Uh, so yeah, we get it off the trailer, get it in the garage, change some parts. This car, 1972 K Reg, 1300 Marina Coupe in black tulip. A car been sat in a barn for about 13 years. Last on the road, 2012. Will it start? Will it run? Uh, at the moment, no. And no. Will it drive? No. Have we got some work to do? Yes. The advantage of it being on the trailer is I can show you underneath. So, easily. Chassis round looks a little bit crumbly, but not rotten. I think it's just the paint needs all rubbing off. Polyurethane tie bar rubbers, that's good. One less job to do. A bit of oil residue around that sump. It's an A-series engine, kind of expected that. Slave cylinder is all the way up there. That is today's part of today's job. So we get a clutch, because at the moment it hasn't got one. She's looking pretty sound under here. Brakes were rebuilt, I think, some while ago before it went into storage, as well as replacement shock absorbers. Track red ends all look good. We just need to get a clutch in it, get the hydraulics working, get some fuel to it, give it a good old check over, service, and put it in for an MOT. I'm going to do it where it lies because with the brakes binding uh, it is a bit of a nightmare to try and get in the garage. I could run it on the starter but I don't want to burn out the starter and yeah so we'll do it where it lies. We'll chop the back wheels, get it jacked up, get the slave cylinder out, new slave cylinder, lead slave cylinder, get it running, get, it, get on with it man, get on with it. <laughs> First things first, we don't have a clutch. The clutch pedal literally goes uh, all the way down to the floor. And zero pressure. And I did notice when I cleaned it, uh, there was a split in the pipe on there. So, got a, and in fact you can see all that hydraulic fluid on there. So, new clutch slave possibly more than likely clutch master pedals going down so i wouldn't think it's seized but we'll take it apart and check the check what the uh, seals are like brakes is binding on the front i had to take the rear wheel off on the passenger side because it was jammed on um, i had to take the wheel off and eventually i took the drum off so we know that it needs rear wheel cylinders just a matter of course really we'll go through the brakes but today we get that clutch slave change because they're an absolute bugger to do i've got to disconnect um the pipe here from the slave cylinder down there these can be a bit of a pain to do so i tend to try and wedge them with a screwdriver on the bell housing just to allow me to get the pipe off uh, why is somebody cable tied Looks like some cable tied the blasted speedo to the pipe. Schnips. Okay. I can see why they've done it to stop the speedo from moving around. The speedo cable, should I say? It is quite a. Yeah, it goes down to the exhaust if it's let go, so probably not a good idea. Cable tie may have been validated, but there are clips underneath the car. Why they didn't use that? Why they didn't use cable tie? Yeah. See if we can undo the pipe. Different size. 
straight. I may end up doing what I hate doing, and that is cut the blasted pipe to get it off. The pipe has a split in it, and to be perfectly honest, I could be here for hours trying to get this union off the insulation in this, so what I'm going to do is cut the pipe. Sorry. Not sorry. A little hacky saw. Blasted. There we go. Stay there. Right. Now the speedo cable's on the way. So the slave cylinder up there has depressed the clutch and it means that the pin is now stuck open I suppose. The slave's obviously gone forward but hasn't re received return backwards so we've got to be careful here because I need to get that pin out but I need to also keep the clutch arm backwards so I can get the slave out. Now my idea was to put a ratchet strap on the clutch arm and then tie it back onto the chassis uh, or the axle just to sort of hold it back so I can get everything out. But where it's actually down or clutches down, we could actually use that to our advantage if I can get something in there to keep the arm back whilst I get the pin out and the slave cylinder out. We're going to look and see if I can find a tool I made some while back to help with this very issue. I found my special tool. I made this piece of box section with an old screwdriver welded to it. So the idea is to jam that up onto the steering rack and push the arm back or hold the arm back, get the pin out, get the slave out, and then repeat it to get the new slave in. Yay. Yeah, that's not good. That didn't go too well. Pin is now bent. But I have a replacement, or I could just bend that back. Should be fine. That's the old slave out. You can see the piston. There's the camera. Piston is stuck down. Um, so we can get that out. We can reuse that at some point. Maybe have it re-sleeved or something. But that's annoying because well, that's not annoying. The annoying bit is that now the arm is down and that fell out. Which, for those of you who may have done a slave stone on the marina before, they don't just fall out. They only fall out if there's wear in the clutch and the arm is pushed right down or the arm is bent. That was bent, but I don't think the arm was bent. Hmm. That slave cylinder just fell out. It does worry me. So I'm going to get a camera into the bell housing now. I do have a little inspection camera, but unfortunately I didn't charge it. So we'll just try the phone. This is brand new and it looks to be a very nice part, to be perfectly honest. Um, it's the original bore size. It looks, they look very much like, um, in fact they are very much like Land Rover, master, uh, Land Rover slave cylinders. And you can actually machine them down to fit. But Power Track Limited, thankfully, have probably done that for us. And that looks a nice, nice piece of kit that. There doesn't seem to be any boot on the end of it, which is a bit of a shame. So I have to use the old boot, which I think is still attached to the bent pin. But let's see if my replacement clutch hose fits. The answer to that is yes, it does. So that's cool. Now to fit it, once I find the boot. 
Where's I put the boot? The boot, the boot, the boot. Oh, there we go. Boot on a bent push rod. Uh, I've got another push rod, or I'm going to bend that back. Probably put a new one on it, or one that's not bent. Then bend that later back to how it was. The boot has to be reused, which is a bit of a shame. <sighs> but it's fine, it's okay, boot's good. <laughs> Right, I couldn't find another push rod, but I've straightened that out. Let me just give it a bit of a tap. So, let's see if that fits. Well, fits if it goes in easy. <coughs> okay, right, well, I'll put the old. Uh, can't see. Put the old dust cap on. Push that up. Push that in. Come on. There we go. In we go. Right. All done. See that? That should be on there. On there. That's it. Right. Okay. All right. Let's get this all bled up, and then. I'll just show you how I do that. Sledgehammer to crack a nut, really, but this is my brake bleeder. Well, it's not, it's my compressor. But it's the best way of bleeding brakes, I find. Ooh. Right. So, what I've got here, uh, find it. Find the right bits. There we go. Let's get that plumbed onto the back of the slave sander. Really simple. No mess. Famous last words. Oh. Mm, that's tight on there. Right, usually the pedal go down, so we'll pump it a little bit. Oh, there you go. We have a clutch. That's good. Gonna get this engine running. It is free. I put it in gear and just to be a little bit of a rock. So I know the engine turns, or at least will turn. Yeah, it ran when it was parked, so what could go wrong? So we're gonna do three main things. We're going to check fuel, spark, and air. Let's see if we can get this thing going. She coughed, which is really good. I wasn't really expecting that, to be honest. Um, I couldn't see the spark on this, but clearly it did cough. So let's get a bit of fuel. Let's take the hard pipes off that are on this. However, I'm just gonna bottle into it for now. Let's see what happens. Bring up a quick header tank with a bit of fuel pipe on it. Stick it straight onto the carburetor's float bowl, float bowl. Then, um, yeah, we'll get it running, get on the flat, and get the rear brakes. Rear brakes done. Oh. Properly gravity fed into the carburetor. Not many modern cars, no modern cars, obviously, you could do that with, but I often find this method on a barn find take it with you, having a separate tank so you can just remove the whole issue of fuel 
because obviously we know modern fuels tend to corrode all rubber components unless they're obviously E10 compatible. This gets us running, it gets us moving. It doesn't get us an MOT. I don't think my MOT guy is going to like that. Doesn't matter. Let's fill it up with fuel and get it running. Get it in the garage. Another thing I've got, it almost looks like something used in a hospital, but it's brilliant because it's a two stroke mixing thing, but obviously we're not using it for two stroke, we're using it for fuel. It keeps it nice and easy to pour. Obviously, you've got to have a little bit in there to give weight to the gravity to work. But I say she'll snap over just like that. There you go, she runs. Get it back down the ground. Get this in there. Oh, I've got the rear brakes. I don't think I've got a clutch. What we've got is something that happens all the time on barn finds. The clutch plate has stuck to the flywheel. Now these are easy to shift most of the time. Get the engine warm enough and then, you know, jack it up in the air, shift it through the gears, or even I tend to get them running and take them for a drive and match the gears and eventually they give way. I can't do that on here at the moment because we haven't got any brakes and, um, yeah, so let's get the brakes done somehow without a clutch. We'll get in the garage. Change the master cylinder, get the brakes bled, then we'll see what's happening on the front. If the calipers need a rebuild, which they often do, uh, it's much easier just to sort of pop the pistons out. But if I can at least get some sort of braking system working, then I can free the clutch off. And then that's ticked off the list. Not that I have a list, you understand. My list is in my head. It kind of changes all the time. Um, it's the same when I'm working on bigger projects. I don't really have, I have an end goal. Um, I just get there in different ways and probably different ways what other people might do. Anyway, I digress. Right, I've got the rear brakes off. Well, rear wheels off, I lied. Shoes off. I'm just trying to get this cotter pin off of the back of this handbrake clevis. And um, somebody's put one of those stupidly thin ones on it, which bend and bend around and then you can't pull them out so sort that out in a second but this I'm sure these pistons have pretty much had it they, they might have been changed at some point but you see all the corrosion which is aluminium corrosion on the actual bodies so they'll be shot handbrake looks all right the one thing on this car it's actually got a rear anti-roll bar now mark one marinas did not come in man did not come with anti-roll bars from the factory this has been put on afterwards uh, this is how it's obviously been mounted on the chassis rail using original parts. This axle was off of a Mark II or Mark III Marina because it's got the uh, original saddles on the casing. Unlike the original axle wouldn't have had these. And also it's probably got a different handbrake arrangement, I think, slightly. Uh, but everything looks pretty good under here. There's a little bit of daylight here, which I don't like. And the restorer in me is really struggling to not strip that right back and replace it, the proper panel in there and everything. So we'll come on to that in a little while. Uh, today's job is just to get these rear brakes freed off, new cylinders fitted, and then I can change the master cylinder and bleed the brakes so we can actually at least drive the thing. <laughs> Right, I got the old wheel cylinders off. These are absolutely horrific. Uh, apart from being seized, aluminium corroded. Pistons have completely seized inside the bodies. So, no choice. New parts from Borgenbeck. 
Now I've used these on a number of cars. Should I say a number of classic cars uh, with good results. It's a good brand. Um, I'm not entirely sure it's the same brand as it was back in the 70s, but put that on, give it a bit of a clean up, put some copper grease over everything and then where it slides and such like. I've got new rear shoes because the old ones just fell apart. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. That is pretty awful. Um, yeah, so new shoes, new cylinders. I've managed to get the brake pipes off without any issues, just a little bit of heat on them. So that's really good. So we'll do this and then we'll get the master cylinder changed and see if we can bleed the brakes. And then see if we need to, well, then we'll sort the front brakes out, but I've run out of brake fluid. Once I'm done, we're going to get the driver's side done now. I'm not going to show you all that. It's really boring to watch it again and again and again. So get the driver's side done. I want to master something just like that. Well, the water pump on this is absolutely shot. So we've got a new one. You can see on there that the bypass hose was fitted with one of those horrible catenary ones. And so we're going to change that for a brand new, nice bit of pipe. Sorry the audio is a bit funny on this bit. I had to uh, re-dub myself and I couldn't get it in time, so, so well. <laughs> Guess how long it'll take to drain this of engine oil. Stick around, you might want to watch the whole thing.
<laughs> it's not supposed to do that. I did say there was a bit of rust on this and I found it, it's in the back behind the wheel on the passenger side, the usual spot. Ah, it's been bodged. So what we've got here, apart from a fly buzzing around my head, all we've got here is somebody's attempt to bodge, for want of a better word, a repair and they've used uh, a bit of filler and I've used a bit of sloppy bitumen or whatever. Anyway, I can't just sit here and go, that's fine. But that's what we're dealing with. So it's literally just where that hole is, which equates to and I just can't sit here and think oh yeah that's fine that'll be okay so I'm gonna have to cut it actually I think it'd be quicker literally just to cut that out make some new pieces weld them in rather than messing around I hate bodge jobs sort of this rear squab spare wheel area. I really hate doing these pieces. You can do them really well if you've got the right panels, which is the back of the wheel tub, which I do have. Unfortunately, I'm trying to find it now, it's the wrong side. So I had to make up the bottom part of it. So it's not the greatest job, but it's okay, I think, for now. So that's that side, and then it was just on this side, a bit of light in there. So yeah, not the greatest, not the best, but it'll do. It's strong, it's solid, it's decent thickness material, and I'm happy with it, really. I want to get on, get the car in my tea, because I didn't expect to see that, and it's taken far longer to fix than it needed to have done. The old pump, which is actually pretty grotty, um, didn't work. So we've got ourselves a nice new Lucas style one to replace the awful plastic one that's down there. But this, believe it or not, was only held in with one screw and that screw pretty much rounds out to take it off with a little bit of brute force, unfortunately. Never mind. So this one can go on here. Early cars had one that had an integral pump on the bottle. This has had a later pump put in at some stage. So we need to look at a placement for this, which I think they sat about here. Just need to make sure we've got enough room. So pipes and such. A bit of black mold, just what you want for your wipers. Uh, out, so that one goes on there. Just mocking it up with these lovely original pipes. There's in there, that'll need gun, degunging on that filter. Come on, mate. That'll go on there, and I reckon that could go there. Right, find some little grub screws. Try it. 
too small. Perfect. There we go. Nice and secure. Right. Ugh. Ow! Now tell me if it works. One of these has got a, basically their twin outlet little balls in them. That one, passenger side's working perfect. Driver side, need a little bit of a secret tool just to get that. Little bit blocked, a little bit of welding wire in there, a bit of cleaner, also useful for direction. There we go, beautiful, beautiful. One of the most important things on a barn find, any car really, any classic car, is obviously the fuel system. And we talked about getting it running on a header tank, which I did, and it ran lovely. And then we had a bit of a problem because I was getting massive fuel starvation coming up to the pump. Now these pumps, they are mechanical, they run off the cam. So you could either have uh, the, the, maybe the cams worn down where the armature runs on it, unlikely you could have it that the arms worn out or broken that is likely that's happened sometimes people fit them and they jam on the cam and then they break the arm and all so. but they also have a diaphragm in them now these were obviously made before modern fuels came out and started destroying anything that was natural rubber same with the fuel lines. Now these fuel lines have been changed. I've checked the dates on them. The dates are 2008, which is about 15 years ago. But they are starting to show signs of cracking. So this stuff, a little bit expensive. You could find cheaper stuff out there. Um, you could use um, high pressure pipe that you'd use on modern fuel cars. Not a problem. Does the same job. These are actually carburetor only ethanol resistance these are what they call uh, I think it's R9 SAE 30R 14T1 with a date code of 2003 so we know it's all good I've got some quarter inch and I've got some 5 sixteenths or 8 mil and quarter inch so I'll do the one from the pump to the fuel line which is coming through the car I'll do the one underneath the car where there's two fuel lines that come together and then there's one on the back on the fuel tank which is well to do and then we'll do from the pump i've also bought a little glass filter which will sit between the pump and the carburetor because again that is pr i had to put a new send unit on this as well which came out green it was so in the, all the moisture and everything that had obviously been left in that tank uh, it turned everything green horrible, so we don't want that coming through. Probably should have drained the tank, but the tank had nothing in it. Um, and what's coming through is seemingly clean at the moment, but who knows. So we'll put one end on it, just to be safe. Uh, so we will get that done. Okay, I could go for cheapness and just stick on one of these. I've got bags of these. These are plastic uh, one-time use filters. Uh, you. You, know, you can get them on eBay and Amazon for like a pound for ten, something stupid like that. I've had them crack on me in the past, um, so personally, I'm not a massive fan. Um, these ones, you can not only unscrew and change the filter inside, or you could think, or take it apart, clean it, and put it back together, which is much more preferable for me. I think these ones, they're all right for what they are, but do it right, do it first time. Let's take the off, you little cheeky air filter. Mm -hmm. See, that's seen better days. Might be able to do something about that. Oh, you cheeky. Because I think the pipe 
that came off of it is probably a little bit thicker walled and has a bit more dexterity to it. Whereas my new pipe doesn't have so much flex because it is a carburetor only pipe. So I'm going to have to cut that pipe down that's coming into the car. I think the pump that was on it originally. Yeah, this was the pump I had on it. It's an original pump. It's an SU pump. It's the one you can you can find a diaphragm kit. You could change it. Um, I wasn't too sure doing a bit of mileage to want to risk it. But you can see they're at a different angle. The one on it, that's straight out. This one's got an angle to the side, and actually probably would be a bit better in this instance. So that's specifically Marina, whereas that one is very universal for anything. A series, mini metro, that sort of stuff. So we haven't got quite so much flex. Tell me if it leaks. Here it comes. MOT day for the Purple Coupe. Let's hope, fingers crossed, for a ticket uh, because it's got to take it away in about a day's time. A couple of last minute checks. Uh, tire pressures, probably just need to check those. Not that they're going to fail on tire pressures, but these tires haven't been on the car and they look a bit flat. So that's one thing to do, just check oil, check the water, so we're okay. But warm day today, hopefully, the cooling system will hold up. I'm sure it will. So off we go. The bonnet's just popped up. That's the first problem. I better pull over and sort that out. Not that it'll ping up and blow in my face. Well, hopefully not. That has happened to me on another car. So let's just pull over and sort that out. We've got plenty of time. Maiden journey in 13 years. Yeah, I will sort out the bird mess. It's not something of a problem at the minute for an MOT. All happy and healthy under there. All pressure, decent temperature, still quite cold. I'm going to have to do some of this steering wheel. It's a bit flexible. Why that's been fitted at some point, I don't know. That's more dangerous. That is not a mountainy steering wheel. Down here at the MOT garage, and I found a problem. This car's been on the road for 13 years and they're struggling to find out the system. How do we get an MOT? The MOT failed, and we've just got a blowout. Taking out two tyres on the purple coupe through pothole in the wonderful Derbyshire countryside. Can you see that? It's out of focus. There you go. I'm out of focus. There you go. You want to see me or do you want to see the car? You want to see the car. So it's okay. I've got somebody coming to help. I don't know. Can you claim on potholes? I've never, never struck a pothole. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully we haven't damaged the alloys. So in other news, though, we are on our way home after a failed MOT, I have to say. And there's a little bit of work to do. Now, I'm going to read these out. So failed. Dangerous defects. Torsion bar modified so the suspension is inoperative offside front, which is basically um, somebody's lowered the car and probably load it a bit too much. Yeah, we could try and adjust the trim height, boost it up. Steering wheel likely to become detached. Um, this is the most dodgiest steering wheel. I kind of left it on. I have got the original one to put on, but this is this is how it is at the minute. Look at that moving steering wheel. 
such deflection. And there's been some nice people, very nice people in the Derbyshire countryside who have um, asked if I'm okay. I'm fine. Cars, cars not quite as it was, but you know. Hopefully there's nothing more serious than two blown out tyres, but there we go. I could have done this for dramatic effect. And this is actually, you know, I purposely drove through it. I didn't purposely drive through it, but I could have done it. I could have purposely drove through it. YouTube, like, ah, oh, sugar, right through that. Just awaiting rescue in the form of a 1977 American pickup truck, along with uh, some replacement wheels for this freaking car. I don't often get mad. I don't get mad. You know, it's, I'm just pleased it's not pitch black because I am on a country lane, as you can see. But it makes for an interesting content, wouldn't you say? Anyway, we're just listening for the dulcet sounds of a, here we are, there he is. So, hello, John, thank you for rescuing. Right, okay, so we should be doing some MOT repairs, but I want to try and get some of this bodywork sorted out. Now, for a lot of you, you may have looked at it in the photographs and the videos and thought, it's not that bad, it's okay, what are you worried about? Well, I tell you, it needs to look better than it does. I've had to look at it in the fact that we've got a repair on the back, which I've done, which has got to have paint. And I've gone over the whole body and had a look. Um, and it's been painted a little while ago in cellulose. It was cellulose originally, obviously, but now we need to go back over it in a few little areas. But I'm trying to keep it the patina look rather than the restored look. So I do apologize straight away. It's not gonna be the crispest paint job or touch-ins as you could possibly imagine. It's gonna look usable. Okay, this is proper on the driveway stuff. I'm literally rubbing down and I'm just putting a little bit of rust stuffer on it. A little bit of epoxy on those little areas, which is nice and flat. It will be nice and flat, which is dried, which I flat it off. Get a little bit of high build on that. Maybe a little putty just to sort of smooth it out a little bit. I'm not going mad on this. It's just to make it look half decent. Um, but there are areas, bigger areas that we've got to paint. We talked about the passenger door that has absolutely had it. I really don't like the way that looks. So we're going to put the other door on, I think. And then I'm probably going to end up painting the door the quarter panel, possibly literally the lower half of the quarter panel, the door and the sill, which is not ideal. I didn't want to be doing this. So that's it with the purple coupe. I didn't get the final ending video shot that I wanted because of all things that were going on. So we took it to Norfolk. It was a great success. It did uh, quite a number of miles in a very short amount of time. And for a car that had been off the road for about 15 years, brilliant. I'm just working on this two litre, no it's not a two litre, 1.7 HLS Atel, which um, I've only done the bottom of the wing, a sill and some bodywork generally on it, which I didn't film the whole lot because I just had so much on. But the next video may well be this 1.7 SL Estate in Beige. Maybe. Like, subscribe.